Hi, I'm going to develop the function isOrd in a test-driven way using R, only using an R script and using the test that library for testing. So we're going to write the function isOrd, which determines if a number is odd, let's say three. And then the first thing we need to do is write a test that breaks. Well, first we load the testing library, test that. And there's a function that checks if everything works without an error message, which is expect silent. For example, I expect that if I run is odd with a number three, that I don't get an error message. But there is an error message. It could not find the function is odd, which is very reasonable uh, because we didn't write that. So now we can fix the test using as little um, as little effort as possible. So let's try this one. Still not silent because we unuse, there's no argument here, so add an argument. Done, fix it, check it in on GitHub. The next test we'll be writing is that, for example, that three is an odd number, so three should be odd. This test indeed fails. That means we should now use minimal effort to fix it. We can do that by simply always returning true. So if I run the function, this test still passes. Fix this one. Nice, check it in on GitHub. Now we're going to add a new function that should break. So let's say, for example, two is not an odd number. It's an even number. So this test indeed breaks. So now we're going to add our first non-trivial things. Um, so an odd number if from uh, the input x if we divide it by two and the remainder is zero, if we divide it by two, so that's a modulo operator, if the remainder by two by if the remainder of a division by two equals zero, that's an even number. Um, actually, we're writing if it's an odd number, so that means uh, the remainder should be one. So here we see if it still works. Three is indeed still odd. Two is not odd. That's great. So uh, let's see if there are some things that uh, that's, that work as unexpectedly. Let's say minus three, for example. No, that works fine. Um, uh, minus two is also not odd, also works fine. So uh, zero, so zero is not an odd number. That still works fine. But there are other things that I would expect. For example, I expect an error message. When I call is odd with uh, some kind of nonsense text, then I expect an error message. Let's say x must be a number. So if I run this test, it gives me, uh, it says, yeah, it gives an error, like, but that's not a very helpful error. Uh, so a beginner or a, a newbie to my, so th to this function can't understand what's going wrong because here she thinks, well, I've never implemented a binary operator and those kind of things. So let's help them, let's help our user by adding this proper test. So we can test if a number is numeric by using a is numeric. So that's a, yeah. So if X is not numeric, then the error message should be, uh, I just copy paste this one. So if X is not numeric, it should give this error message. Yeah, so that helps our user. All old tests pass, and now we have a new one. So that's great. The next point is a bit of an architectural uh, decision. Let's say we want to get uh, for two numbers if they are old. Uh, then maybe you are tempted to do like this, and then you would say uh, that the return of this function should be a true and a false, because the one is odd, so that's true. The two is not odd, so false and that it should give back two values. But I feel, but the other alternative is saying that, well, if you use English text to describe this, you say, dear computer, is one and two odd, which is not English. You would expect a function perhaps like this, r odd, to do, to support multiple numbers. But you can also say again, let's use that factorization is an inherent part of R, those kind of things. In this case, I choose to give an error message. So that X must be one number. 
And in the end, I can always add this function uh, R alt to, to add the vectorized version of that. Um, so for this input, I'm going to tell the user that he or she must exactly use one number. So we're going to um, add a new error. So that means that the length of the input, in this case x, length of x, if the length is different from 1, then x must be one number. So let's see if we now fix the test. Yes, we fix the test. That's great. Also, R has some side things. Um, for example, there are some unexpected values that you may want to check as well. So null is a clear one. If I put in a null, then I expect this error message that works, so I don't need to add that test. And A also works. But for example, infinity, um, that, uh, that may give me weird results. So if I just run that, it gives me back an NA. Cleaner would be to say no, x must be a non-infinite. Or let's say a finite number also works, non-infinite. It must be a finite number. So I expect an error if I do determine of infinity, if it's odd that x must be a finite number. So this test breaks. So that means next step, fix it. So if is infinite, x, x must be a finite number. Maybe I use one. Yeah, so that will work. Oops. So here I load the function and bam, we've added this. Also, let's test for minus infinity for now. No, that works, so I can remove the test. So here I've developed the complete function is old in a test-driven development, in a test-driven way. Um, I can make no tests anymore that will crash, uh, that, that results in something unexpected. So I would be happily push this to production and publish it and put it in an R package. Uh, of course, if a user finds something he or she can add, send me, uh, the test that he or she thinks uh, fails and should pass, and I can easily add this, so we have a way to communicate. Um, additionally, I could add some documentation, I should put this in the package, I can check tests for style using linter, but I would say, I'm done, I push this to GitHub. So that concludes this video in which I show you how to write isOld in a test-driven development way, and I wish you a very good day. Bye!